First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. If you don't mind, stand on your feet. <coughs> Amen. Yeah. Rinda, give me a little bit more juice in this mic. I want to blow Brother Larry hair off his head. Not to me. Amen. Grab your Bibles, raise them up in the air, and repeat after me. Lord, I am. Lord, I am. Your servant. Your servant. And I am listening. And I am listening. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father God, we come to you right now as humble as we know how. Thanking you right now for allowing us to be your humble servant right now. Father, we asking God that you will hide me behind the cross that you may be glorified in this place. We magnify you on today, God, because it is in you that we live, move, and have our being on today. And we praise your name, God. We praise your name. We love you. We adore you. Now speak, God, through your word. That we may feast off your word and have what bread from heaven on today, God. Somebody need to be encouraged. Somebody need to be uplifted, God. Somebody may need healing and restoration. And any way you see fit to pray to bless us, God, we will be satisfied in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We adore you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First Peter. Is the microphone that loud, y'all? Yeah. Right. That's on. Huh? All right. All right. All right. First Peter. Chapter 2. We'll start in chapter 2, 1 through 5, and then we're going to verse 19 through 24. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Verse 2, like newborn babies, crave pure pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation somebody say grow up. grow up now that you have tasted that the Lord is good somebody say the Lord is good Lord is somebody say the Lord is good. Lord is good verse 19 you ready let's go for it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But now, if it to your credit, somebody say your credit. Your credit. If you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this, you were called. Say that again. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you as an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judged justly. Verse 24, going further than what I said. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Somebody say live for righteousness. Yeah. By his wounds you have been healed. In the name of Jesus. Bless this word in Jesus name. 
Briefly for a moment, I know there was a lot of reading, but briefly for a moment, I would like to speak to you on the subject, it's not fair. It's not fair. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's not fair. Amen. Look at them again and tell them, Lord, have mercy, it ain't fair. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. It's not fair. Often in life, we experience situations or conditions or circumstances that are just not fair. Sometimes we cause self-afflictions on ourselves. And sometimes we are born into it. Sometimes we have been assigned to it. But ultimately, we come to the conclusion sometimes in our own mind that this is just not fair. I want you to understand that I did not say that life is not fair. I said it's not fair. Because the reason why I didn't say that life is not fair is because we used to teach our children when they play with one another, boy, you better play fair. But as they grow up, we teach them that life ain't fair. <laughs> it it seems kind of like we're contradicting ourselves because first we tell them to play fair and then when they grow up we tell, teach them that life is not fair. And so in the text, we've been, we've been studying for the last three weeks, we start talking about in Acts, learning about the power of the Holy Spirit. Knowing that when you have salvation, you are you have the Spirit of God in you, but when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are filled with power. Somebody say, I got power. Yeah, yeah, I got power. So in, 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 in Acts chapter 3, Luke began to teach us about Peter when he received the power of the Holy Ghost. He, he was anxious. Somebody say anxious. He was anxious to see the power of God work in his life. He was anxious to see that, to see how God moved in his life. And so one day he walked up on a man that was asking and begging everybody that came into the, 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 the gate called to pray. Every time somebody walked up, this man, this lame man was begging people to give him some money or give him something because he was lame and couldn't do nothing for himself. And I found out that some of us are lame because we, 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 we have been in a condition a long time and we can't do anything for ourselves. But God is getting us to a place where we stop blaming ourselves or being lame but start looking to Yeah. 
was lame for 40 years. How long was he lame? 40 years. He was lame for 40 years. It wasn't his fault. He didn't ask to be lame. He'd been lame for 40 years. And I don't, I don't know if he was born lame. I don't know if something happened to him to become lame. I don't know. But the Bible tells us that he'd been, he'd been lame for 40 years. But in this season of his life, when he came up on Peter, this was the season that he was going to get his miracle. Please help me preach today and tell your neighbor this is your season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your season to receive your miracle. This is your season to stop using the excuse that I'm lame. This is your season that you ain't gonna have to beg nobody for anything. This is your season that your miracle is coming. Look at, look at somebody tell them that your miracle is right around the corner. It's right, it's, it's, it's right around the corner. And matter of fact, you are closer than you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're closer than you think. You know, you're closer than you think. So Peter, Peter looked at him and, and he saw him begging. And, and Peter said, he, he, he blessed me because Peter said, Peter said, because the man wasn't used to holding his head up. So the, he, Peter said, look at us. Yeah, we begin to talk about look at us because he, he said, look at us because today is the last day you're going to hold your head down again. Come on. Today, I don't know who am I talking to, but today is the last day you're going to hold your head down and feel sorry for yourself. Today is the last day that you're making this message ain't for you. Maybe this message is for somebody else. And maybe they got their head down because of their situation. But I need to tell you, I need to tell you to tell somebody that this is the last day that you're going to hold your head down because I need you to look at us because when you look at us, you look at that power that's in the person that's calling you to come up. You look at that us and I need you to know that there is power about to transfer into you and your legs is about to be strengthened and you're going to get up. The first thing he did, he told him to look at us, stretch, stretch out his hand and pull him up. Sometimes you got to pull some people up because they're too lame to get up by themselves. I wish I had about two or three people that knew the words that coming out of my mouth. I need you to look for somebody that you can pull up. I need you to look for somebody that you can encourage. I need you to look at somebody that, that, that look for somebody that needs strength in their legs, strength in their prayer, strength in their ability, strength in their mind. Is there anybody in here know right now the Holy Spirit is showing you somebody right now why you thinking that you need to help. Stop being lame right now. Like you're dead and lame. Now, if you you got power, come on, you supposed to act like you're 
excited about what's living on the inside of you. Uh, so so they, they, it wasn't fair that they were spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeing people being uh, 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 signs and wonders, seeing people being raised from the dead, seeing people being healed. They were so powerful, y'all. Listen, watch this. They were so powerful that their shadows was healing people. The apostle Peter, his, 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 he was so powerful that when people walked under his shadow, they got healed. People started seeing if I can get them in the street, that people that were lame, the people that need healing, those that need restoration, if I can get them in the street and they came and they shadow, listen, y'all, the shadow had power. And so when they brought them out into the street, there was an expectation when somebody got upset because of what the power, because of the power that they had. I come to tell you today, the enemy knows how much power you have. That's why he coming at you like he coming at you. He's coming at you because he don't want you to utilize that power. He don't want you to know that you got power in your shadow. He wants you to stay confused and crazy because he knows that you got power. High five your neighbor and take a name when you got power. and the situation. 
situation that you're in. Listen, don't tell somebody it's in a secret thing. Yeah. So but it belongs to me, and if it belongs to me, you got to know that I got to get what I need from the Lord. Amen. Anybody need anything from the Lord on today? Amen. So I've been trying to understand for years. I have tried to understand and I studied for years trying to understand why does it please God when we suffer? Oh God. You know it pleases God when we suffer, don't you? Uh, uh, he, said, he said, if you're going to be my disciple, he said, you must take up your cross and follow. Yeah, you got to follow him. So what is it that he, is he rejoicing because we're suffering? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm like, what's up, God? I've been trying to figure this out for years because in Isaiah 53, uh, uh, 3 through 6, it says, he, he was born, he born our grief. It says, he carried our sorrow. He said, the scripture said, yeah, we have seen him as him strictly smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded. Here it is, y'all, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chest So in other 
words, he's saying that you got to be willing to grow up. Come on, somebody. You don't know how strong you are because then until you go through something that have knocked the wind out of you. Have you ever been through something that have knocked the wind out of you? Oh, God, if you had been through anything, I just applaud you right now. And some of us are still rolling our eyes at you because we don't been to hell and back. But you look at somebody and tell them, I'm still here. And he, he took an overdose and killed himself. 
Somebody say it ain't fair. Yeah. Uh, he had it going on. He, they were having fun together as friends. And, and, and it seemed like you would have never known. Listen, you would have never known that he was even contemplating suicide. Oh, Y'all ain't saying that to me up in here. That's why in chapter in, in 2 and 1, he said, get rid of all of this stuff that's clogging up your mind. If you, you, you are like a newborn baby, you got to be hungry for the milk of the word. Listen, I got a grandbaby right now. Every time I see him, he's hungry all the time for some milk. He hungry all the day, John, the day, John. Always hungry. You understand what I'm saying? He's hungry. He wants some milk. He telling his mother that I need to grow, so I need you to feed me. That's why the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, because you got to say, feed me, Simo. I'm hungry. Is there anybody in here hungry? Is there anybody in here that wants to grow in the Spirit of God? God said, he needed hunger and thirst after righteousness. He said, they shall be filled. He didn't say that you might be filled. He said, you shall be filled. Look at somebody say, he shall be filled. They shall be healed and, and uh, they shall be filled. I'm sorry. It's, it pleases God to see that you have the right attitude and, and, and look at somebody and just say, just be patient. Be patient. Yeah. Don't, don't lose your head. Just be patient. See, see, see how does, if some of you, uh, uh, maybe, maybe some, see, I have to tell on myself because see, y'all don't want me to tell you. You'll be able to see. See, some of us don't like to wait on nothing. Come on now. <laughs> when, when, I, when I want my miracle, I want my miracle right now. You know what I mean, Super Cool? Yeah. I, I want it right now. You know, I want God to answer me right now. But I come to tell you, sometimes God don't answer you right now. Oh, God. <laughs> sometimes, you know, God, God will allow problems to come in your life. You ain't got to find a problem. A problem will find you. Because let me tell you something. When problems come, God is saying that I trust you with this problem. But I'm going to pull out a purpose, a purpose out of your problem that's going to produce a miracle in your life. You didn't even know after all of them tears that God is going to bring you out and bring bring you up and bring you out. He's about to raise you up out of this thing. No, but the enemy is trying to use fear to sabotage you, to, to stop you. He, he's trying to keep you from learning your secret things. So you look at somebody and tell them, you can't stop right now. Yeah, yeah. You can't stop right now. Come on. I got to change my attitude while I'm in this situation. I got to change the way I'm thinking. About this situation, you know how it is. When, when bills get overdue, you know how it is. When school get too much, you know how it is. When your child is asking you for, for too much, you know how it is. When sometimes things break down all the time, you know how it is. Sometimes the children want too much, you know how it is. Sometimes you don't feel like getting up out of bed. Some days, some weeks, you just want to just lay in there all week long. But you know you can't do it because you got to go to work and keep your job. But I gotta keep the right attitude in the midst of this suffering. Yes. Yes. It's not the suffering that God is pleased with. It's your attitude in the midst of the suffering. Yes. So my next point is: listen, what keeps us in there a long time? Hmm. This is what you don't want to hear. I don't want to hear it. Look at somebody say, I don't want to hear this. I wish y'all just could give me just, we all turn y'all energy up on a little bit on at least five. <laughs> oh God, I finally got a laugh and a smile on some of y'all. But, but here it is, complaints. When we complain about our problems, oh God, I mean, I was studying this and writing this message and then he, God just arrested me right in my tracks. When you complain about your problems, then when you complain about your season, here it is, when you complain about your season, you keep yourself in the season longer. God Almighty. Hey, can I can I preach this name here? Oh God, I'm gonna give y'all 10 more minutes and I'm gonna let you out of this. He, he, he said, he said, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. He said, no, he's not asking this of you because you haven't tasted that the Lord is good. You 
Who am I talking to up in here? You start thinking more negative things than you do positive things. So God keep you in that season longer. You start saying, Lord, I'm sick of this. Oh, God, then you start saying, Lord, I'm tired. I can't stand this. And you are cursing yourself. The Bible said the secret things belong to the Lord. He, he, uh, the secret things belong to the Lord. He said, but, but, but. He said, they belong to you. The secret things come from the Lord. But they belong to you. And so he can't give it to you because you complain about it and you keep yourself mentally in a wilderness. You do know the children of Israel wander around for 40 years and their blessing was right around the corner. Come on, somebody. Their blessing was right around the corner and they kept wondering because they kept complaining. See, you got to be around people that's, that's complaining, but you can't let their stuff, they junk get into you. That's why in verse 2 he said, get rid of all of that stuff. Raised. 
when you praise God and in spite of the season that you're in, that, that seems like it's not fair. No. Somebody said it, it ain't fair. Yeah, it ain't fair. And then, it's, and then you keep praising God anyhow. Anyway. <laughs> no, 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 Brother Brandon, this, this not no anyway type. Oh, no, this, this season right here, you're going to have to praise anyhow. Yeah. I know it's bad grandma, but, but so, see, so you got to know, you got to tell the devil really how you feel. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I, I don't even know how to spread it, but I got to come to tell you that it works. And I have to tell the devil, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Can you have preach like your pastor preach and say, I'm going to praise him anyhow? <laughs> I'm going to praise him anyhow. If I get the promotion or not, I'm going to praise him anyhow. If I get the new house or not, I'm going to praise him anyhow. If I get healed or not, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Do anybody got an anyhow type of praise? Still on the inside of you. All he needs is just a faith the size of a mustard seed. Oh, God, because I know I'm conscious that you're still with me. Oh, God, I wish I could preach it like I finished. When Jesus suffered, he glorified God. And here it is. Here it is. Watch this. When Jesus was really suffering, he asked him in the garden, let this cup pass from me. Right. So that let us know on the humanistic side, he didn't really want to go to that cross. Oh, no. But he didn't let his, his flesh, his body, over so pass, uh, take control of his spirit. Oh, no. Okay? So his spirit said, no, you, you got to hang on because the scriptures has to be fulfilled. Y'all with me? If I see somebody sleep, I'm preaching. <laughs> and so you got to understand that the Spirit took control and He said, not my will, but let thine will be done. And so here, we follow the example of Jesus because we need to go further. See, he, and then when He went on the cross, and the first thing He said in the midst of His, the worst suffering that a man could suffer was being hung on the cross. He was hung like a thief and a robber. Those two other two that was with him deserved it, but Jesus didn't deserve, Jesus didn't deserve it, and it was not fair. When the woman had the issue of blood uh, for, for 12 years, it was not fair. But when she kept that attitude, if I can get to Jesus, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I, should, I shall be made whole. I don't know how close you are, but I need you to keep the right attitude that God is going to still heal and deliver you. I need you to keep the right attitude that God knows exactly. You got to stay conscious of it. Yes, right. Because it ain't fair. Right. And let me hurry. And he remained, no matter what, in every situation, no matter what kind of suffering he went through, Jesus remained in the, in the, in the, in the, with the attitude of giving God glory. He would, he would say, Father, I'm praying this prayer when he raised Lazarus up from the, from the dead. It's not that I don't, I, I doubt you. He said, but for their sake. Yeah. <laughs> he said, see, see, for their sake, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show them that you, I got power through you. Come on, somebody. He said, because for their sake, I'm going to show them signs and wonders to let you know, let them know that you are conscious of your God. Oh, God. Somebody is watching you right now and seeing how conscious you are of your God. Please, I need you to encourage your neighbor so they won't give up and tell them, come. Oh, God, they're watching you. They're watching the God in you. The only Bible that somebody is reading is how you take a lick and keep on ticking. You got to know that God is going to watch you and you want to see, you want to show others how strong your God is. You see, your God is mighty. You see, your God is awesome.
But when something is getting on your last nerves, that is when you, you grab the horns of the altar and bring it to the Lord. Yes. And he and God will come to your rescue. And in the midst of your circumstances, I know it ain't fair right now, but God is getting ready to change your attitude. I need somebody to just, just get out of your feelings and hold on to your faith because God is getting ready. Listen, listen to what he says in verse 20. He said, but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and then do it? But if you suffer for doing good and you do, you endure. Wait a minute. My Bible may be wrong over here. I'm going to read it. This one might be right. It says, Is it to your credit if you receive anything for doing wrong, doing so, what is it, suffering? Bring it. Bring the word down with me, Brendan. He said, he said, he said, he said, but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you if you suffer, he said, for doing good, you endure it. This is the commendable thing before God. Anybody can anybody can boast when they got through and it was easy. But if you can endure it, he said it's a commendable thing to God. That means you, you are showing off your God. That means that you, you are representing him. And, and the, the best thing that we can do is be a good example, oh God, of, of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to walk like him. He showed us the way when things are not fair. It wasn't fair that they crucified him. It wasn't fair that they arrested him. It wasn't fair that they, they lied on him. But yet still, he kept walking in spite of Look at somebody and tell them, you got to keep walking. You got to keep walking. You got to endure because it's a commendable thing. It's the right thing to do before God. You got to know God is watching you. Uh, help me preach. Come on. I'm not calling you Michael Jackson, but I need you to tell somebody he's watching you. Come on, somebody. Oh, I wish somebody had a Holy Ghost moonwalk up in here and just tell them, <laughs> just tell them that God is getting ready to bring you out. It's not fair. Understand that God 
the word. The question of why. Yes. Why me, Lord? Why so much pressure? You have to know if you quit complaining and commit to being faithful with the right attitude. Yes. See, the right attitude determines your altitude. Right. Oh God, say work on me, Lord. Work on me, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Somebody say work on me, Lord. Work on me, Lord. Commit yourself to having the right attitude. And God can elevate you. And, and you may not even have the credentials you need to get to where you are. But if you have where you need to go, if you have the right attitude, God will come in and give you the promotion over somebody else because there's something different about you. Oh, God. You can come in and carry your name and say, there's something different about you, boo. Oh, just in, just in case you talk to one of the dudes and bro, there's something, something different about you. Yeah, something different about you. And no matter where you go, you must understand, listen, have a conscious mind of God that there's something different about you. Yes. Yes. And you're going to shine. Yes. No matter where you go, you're going to shine. Yes. Oh God, you got to have that type of attitude that I'm going to shine. Yes. And if you be faithful, yes. God promotes those who are faithful. Yes. Oh, if I had time, I'd talk to yes. Joseph because Joseph, you never heard Joseph complaining in whatever season he was in. He never complained. Every time he was in a dark season, he always tried to help somebody else. And sometimes we get afflicted because we don't try to help somebody else. You know what we do? We start trying to help ourselves. But if you really want, if you really want the glory to shine in your life, you got to get the focus off of you. Come on, somebody say, get the focus off of you. Oh, God. You know, it's always about you. Oh, my. It's all it's always about you. It's always about you. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> and God said, when you think about you, he said, I will deliver you. Oh, there is a way seem right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Yes. And he said, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Give God some praise. Yes. Thank you.